forming ionic bonds. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of a few things about ionic compounds. Now remember that ions are formed when electrons actually move from one atom to another. So one atom loses electrons, another one gains electrons. And these compounds that are formed from these atoms that either lost electrons and are called cations, and atoms that gained electrons and are now called anions, these form ionic compounds. So we can see here, we have sodium cation, which we've discussed already, and chloride anion get together, opposite charges attract, and form this sodium chloride ionic compound. Now, this attraction between these oppositely charged ions is called an ionic bond. So just keep in mind that opposite charges attract. So the sodium is positively charged, the fluoride anion is negatively charged, and those two guys are attracted to each other and they form an ionic bond. Now these ionic bonds are one of the main types of chemical bonds. The other main type is covalent bonds and we'll talk about those a little bit later. Now in contrast to covalent bonds, which we'll, again we'll talk about, uh, ionic bonds are caused by electrons actually transferring from one atom to another. And remember that that number of electrons lost by the cation is equal to the number of electrons gained by the anion. Now keep in mind here also that we can have more than one cation to offset the charge of an anion. We can have more than one anion to uh, offset the charge of a cation, or we can have the lowest common multiple of the cation and the anion partners. So in any of those situations, the bottom line is that we have to cancel out all of that charge. The cation charge has to be canceled out by the anion charge in total. Okay, so now an important little extra piece of information that we're going to get right now is something called the octet rule. Now this just simply says that atoms like to have eight electrons in their valence shell. All right, so what does that mean? We'll talk about that in a second, but keeping in mind that uh, when there are eight electrons in a valence shell, this is a particularly energetically stable arrangement of electrons, and it happens to match the nearest noble gas. So that noble gas arrangement of electrons, having eight electrons in the valence shell, is particularly stable. And so basically, other atoms would like to have that too, and they do that by forming ions. Okay. So let's look at sodium first in its elemental form. It has one valence electron and it is stable. Sodium is rather reactive and it doesn't require a lot of energy to remove that electron to make the sodium plus cation. So let's look at this electron configuration for the sodium atom. So no charge there. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So this 3s1, this is the valence electron. So that's the highest n and we have one electron in the valence shell. The rest of these electrons are called core electrons. So 1s, 2s, and 2p, those are all core electrons for a sodium atom. Now, if that one electron is removed from that highest n orbital, or from the valence shell, then we're gonna get a sodium cation. Now look at the electron configuration for the sodium cation. Notice that this 3s is not filled at all now. So that electron was removed, and now we have 2s2, 2p6, 6 plus 2, that's 8 electrons, and now n equals 2 is the valence shell for the sodium cation. So now the sodium cation does have a complete octet in its valence shell, and that satisfies the octet rule. So that also explains why the sodium cation is very stable and forms rather easily. Okay, so let's look at Lewis dot diagrams for sodium and chloride. So we have sodium atom, so it doesn't have a charge, and we have chlorine atom also. And it has seven electrons around it, the sodium atom has one. Now you might be thinking you can see something happening here, okay? Now for the sodium atom to, an obt to obtain an octet, it has to get rid of that electron. And as you can see here, the chlorine the chlorine atom has seven electrons, it would like eight. So that's kind of an easy solution. Sodium donates that electron or transfers that electron over to chlorine, which forms the chloride anion. 
So that is uh, basically represented right here in pictures. So we take that one electron from sodium, we transfer it to chlorine to form chloride anion, sodium cation, and those two opposite charges are attracted to each other. They form an ionic bond, and now we have sodium chloride, which is an ionic compound. All right, now keep in mind that in electron transfer, the number of electrons lost must equal the number of electrons gained. And so we've mentioned this numerous times. Now, what happens when you have you know, multiple charges? So magnesium is magnesium two plus, and oxygen is oxygen two minus. So in this case, it's exactly the same thing, except both the electrons on magnesium are transferred to oxygen. So oxygen starts off with six, after transfer ends up with eight, and magnesium starts off with two in the valence shell, ends up with zero in the valence shell, which means the, the next shell in is now the valence. And so we have magnesium two plus, oxygen two minus, we put them together without the Lewis dot structures to get magnesium two plus oxygen two minus. Now it's not customary to keep those charges in an ionic compound. So we remove them and we just write magnesium oxide. So it, remember that in the final formula for the ionic compound, you don't want to write the charges on the ions explicitly. All right, now let's look at another example. And uh, in this case, we're going to have Sodium reacting with oxygen. Remember, oxygen needs two electrons to complete that octet, and sodium only has one to get rid of. So it's gonna get rid of that one, but we still have a minus one charge that needs to be offset on that oxygen, two, uh, two minus anion that we're gonna be forming. And also, when we only transfer one electron, then oxygen only has seven electrons and it really wants eight. So the easy solution to that is to just add another sodium atom to the mix. So each sodium atom is gonna transfer one electron. You're gonna have two sodium cations, one oxygen anion, and they're gonna form sodium oxide. And the subscript two tells us that there are two sodium atoms for the one oxide anion. Now, these three ions attract each other to give an overall neutral ionic compound. And we would write the formula, again, notice that we're writing it without the charges. So sodium oxide would be written without the charges. Okay, so let's try it ourselves. So with arrows, illustrate that transfer of electrons to form calcium chloride. And we're gonna start with calcium atoms and chlorine atoms. So show that explicitly and pause the video and give it a try and then we'll go through the answer. Okay, so remember, we can look on the periodic table and we can see that the calcium atom has two valence electrons. The chlorine atom has uh, seven valence electrons. And so the calcium has two to give away, but it can only give away one to one chlorine atom, and it needs another chlorine atom to give the other one away to, okay? So now when we make this ionic compound, we're gonna have calcium two plus, and we're gonna have two chloride minus one anions. So we take the two of those, that's two minus plus two plus, and we get overall zero. We're gonna write that compound as calcium, assume subscript one, and chloride subscript two, because we need two of them to offset that charge. And then we would say, it's called calcium chloride. All right, so in summary, the tendency to form species that have eight electrons in the valence shell is called the octet rule. And so that's a really important rule in chemistry. It'll be very important when we talk about covalent bonding as well. So keep that octet rule in mind. Now the attraction of oppositely charged ions is called an ionic bond. And that, those ions are formed by electron transfer. Some atoms give away electrons, some atoms accept electrons. Ionic bonds are caused by electrons transferring from one atom to another to create these two charged species, which are then attracted to each other. And just always keep in mind that the number of electrons lost by the cations is always equal to the number of electrons gained by the anion or anions. So keep all of that in mind 
And again, this is a fairly challenging topic, so be sure to practice this and we'll talk about naming later on.